My daughter, Sarah Alia Shalom, was in her uh, last day of the midterms tests. She was going to her friend just a block from the house, and she didn't get to the other side of the street. Uh. A few years ago, uh, my father went missing. We had no idea where he was. The uh, detectives and others who were assigned to the case, I, I think they worried that uh, we as a family wouldn't have anybody to, you know, help them to help us along, wouldn't have anybody to, to guide us, so to speak. It's emotionally very hard for a parent when you have a daughter a year and a half in high school, when you see them start really blossoming, understanding much more, doing much more, and then you're waking up to a phone call that she passed away. Saskam coordinated a major search in an effort to try to find my father, to go and uh, search different neighborhoods where he potentially could have been, and to literally try to find him. That effort ended when unfortunately he was found uh, having driven into a river by accident. In aftermath, looking at it, the, um, just for them being with us and guiding us throughout this difficult time was um, such a great help emotionally and beside the, all, all the titles that needed to be taken care of. My brother passed away on a very, very cold February day. And uh, we were taking his body to Israel for burial. We wanted to have some type of proper send-off at Kennedy Airport, especially for those family members and friends that were not traveling to Israel. Uh, in a usual case, this type of um, gathering is done at the cargo area at the airport, understandably so. But to do that on a February night of zero degrees would have been very difficult for, for everybody involved. So Ms. Askim and its leadership, they came up with an idea. There's an abandoned hotel right near Kennedy Airport. And they spoke to the authorities at Port Authority and the people that they, uh, that they had to consult with. And they were actually able to open up the lobby of that abandoned hotel and allow us to use the lobby for a funeral service. Some of the, un the untold stories, you ask the layman, what is Ms. Askin doing? They'll tell you, oh, Ms. Askin gives out cheers and Sifri Torah when somebody's sitting shivering. That's probably the last thing that Ms. Oskam is doing with a family when we have to deal with them. So as a volunteer, we try to make the mourning process as comfortable as possible and as painless as it could possibly be made in order for them to continue on with their lives. Dealing with notifications, crisis intervention, trying to expedite bodies for burial, uh, trying to help people navigate a legal system when the legal system's involved. Ms. Oskam's on the battlefront to take care of these problems, to try to help these parents, to try to ease their pain through this most trying time of their life. Ms. Oskam is able to step into a situation when it seems nobody else can. After the funeral in Israel, uh, when, we, when we arrived to JFK, the representative of Ms. Oskam was with us right away took us throughout the lines, throughout the custom, in, in no time. It was an emotionally such a relief. It is me who ultimately gets the question of why we can't have another air conditioner unit because the warehouse has none. It is me who picks up the broken chairs or the broken tables who realizes that we have to replace those. And so there is an operation and that involves nine warehouses in various locations, Masaskam services the tri-state area. The level of equipment that Masaskam tries to maintain on a daily basis, whether it's one of our forward command posts, down to our own 
emergency operations center that we have set up, should anything big ever happen in the community, we could always activate it together with a lot of the uh, government agencies. All of this costs a lot of money to do it, and we need the community's help to continue doing it. It costs us approximately $100 for every single oval. This includes the delivery, the pickups, the dispatching. $100 an oval for approximately 8,000 available a year. Now do the math. Who's paying our insurance? Who's paying our liability insurance? Who's paying our gas bills? Who's paying for all this stuff? It's the community that we have to rely on. And at the end of the day, the more money we get from the community, the more services we will make available to the community. The organization of Mitaskim put the efforts and connection for us in the community here and we should be there for them because they need the help. What better cause can we support than an organization that on a daily basis addresses all of these issues and helps the community get through these difficult situations?